Hi, it's Dr. Ogden. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about genetics, um, particularly from the perspective of what did Gregor Mendel um, teach us about genetics. So Gregor Mendel was really the first person to analyze um, the, in a very systematic and methodological way the inheritance patterns. And he used um, pea plants and, and bean plants to do this, but mo mostly we're familiar with the pea plants. And from this, he was able to deduce all of the basic fundamental principles of genetics. And I wish I had time, maybe in another lecture, I'll talk more about the history of, of Gregor Mendel, but what a fascinating individual um, where he began uh, his studies. Um, his family made great sacrifice for him to get him to study all the way up through high school. And then he saw basically no other alternative but going into becoming a, a priest, uh, a monk, and, and from that he was able to go even to the university for a couple years uh, in Vienna and then come back and continue his work. It took about eight years basically for him to do his research in pea plants and deduce all of these different principles. So pea plants are, are really interesting because they have the ability to self-fertilize. Now let's look at the anatomy of a pea, pea plant flower here. So you can see uh, you have the flowers and then in the inside of this you have the female portion which is called the carpal and the male portion here which is called the stamen. And um, the female portion up here on the tip it has it's kind of sticky and this is what collects the pollen grains. And the pollen is produced by the stamens, and actually out here on these anthers, and so you have that's these they're almost like these little balloons, and then they burst open, and the pollen is it can be distributed either you know by insects, the wind, or whatever. Now pea plants can self-fertilize, so in other words, this flower head never needs to actually open up and invite a bee inside so that the pea um, can reproduce. The male parts of the same flower can can fertilize the female part of the same flower. And so you can get kind of this genetic identi identical um, generations um, persisting, right? But you can also go in and you can take the male parts and cut them off and then basically decide which male parts are going to fertilize which female parts. And this is what Gregor Mendel did. So he was able to, to completely control the reproductive events inside of his garden. And so he was, was able to start looking at different characteristics and do cr hybridizations or these cross-fertilization experiments, grow them up and see what happened in both the first generation and then he would do this with the second generation and even into the third generation. The seven basic traits that he decided to study, and this was not by accident, he had actually read all of the papers about pea hybridizations and other things, and so he was well versed in, in already um, pea, in, in what was known about um, hybridization in peas, and he was also very interested in the evolution of, of peas. And so he decided to study these seven characteristics, flower color, flower position, seed color, seed shape, pod shape, pod color, and stem length. And it turns out that the, these were seven wonderful characteristics to study because they, they have a distinct forms. There's not like this continuous form like it would be in like hair color in, in humans, for example. And um, these seven characteristics also happen to be on different chromosomes. And this becomes important um, later on. So basically he would do a lot of crosses and he started off doing monohybrid crosses where the only thing that was different between the crosses was the one characteristic he was looking at and every other characteristic was the same. So if you're gonna look at flower colors, then pod shape, roundness of the seeds and everything, all of that was exactly the same. So here's the example of the true breeding, true breeding purple flowers. So we know that these are plants that only have the characteristics to produce purple flowered pea plants and they were crossed with pure breeding white flowered pea plants and in the F1 generation he saw that all of the plants were purple and this was one of the uh, the observations that led him to think that there is this dominance that is happening that one of the character one form of the characteristic is dominant to the other form because he would go ahead and then let this generation um, self-fertilize, for example, and and so you're getting a cross between all of between whatever um, between this generation with itself 
and he ended up getting a ratio of three purple plants to one white colored pea plant. And this ratio was exactly the same for all of the different characteristics that he looked like, looked at, all seven of those. Whenever he would get to the F2 generation of the, um, of the hybrids here, he would always have the three to one uh, ratio. You know, and you might imagine that his real counts, though, he wasn't just doing this once. He was doing it multiple, multiple times where he was counting thousands and thousands of different characteristics across these pea plants. And so maybe it didn't turn out exactly to, you know, 3,000 to 1,000, but it was really, really close. And he saw this over and over again. And so once you see this, you know that the pattern then is telling you that there is some underlying mechanism that is driving this. And this is what led Mendel to four to develop four hypotheses. First, is that there are alternative forms of genes. He called these in initially elements or something, but now we, we call them alleles, that each characteristic has two forms. So the gene is the, the, the characteristic, and the alleles are the forms of the characteristic, right? So there's a gene for pea plant color, or pea flower color, and there are a, two different alleles. It can be either purple or white. He also proposed that for each characteristic, each organism has two alleles. And this is where he refers to this element, that these two alleles would come together and in, for example, in the hybrid. And he knew that it had one, of, one element that was the purple pea plant and one that was the white pea plant. And you didn't see the white because it was covered up by the dominance of the purple. But then in the next generation, the white did show up again. He also proposed that the, it was the gametes that were carrying these alleles. Now, this is quite amazing because he didn't know anything about meiosis or DNA at this point, but he knew that that information to tell a plant whether it was going to have a purple flower or a white flower was carried inside of the gametes in the pollen grains or in the, um, in the, uh, essential, the, in the eggs of the female portion of the, of the pea plant. And finally, this idea of dominance or recessive.